Let me give you a little bit of a historical perspective. As you look at the evolution of the profession of selling, and, and this research came up from uh, John Sullivan, our director of professional services, who was teaching a class at the University of Minnesota on sales training, instructional design and so forth. And he did some research on what were the tools that salespeople have been given over the years, what were the skills that they were taught, and how have they been perceived by salespeople. And as he looked at those pieces of information, kind of dropped into three buckets as far as time periods. And era one, which began in the mid-50s, ran to the mid-70s, was kind of that era where the salespeople were told where to go and told what to say. It was kind of like, uh, well, given the sales script. And the sales scripts were based on very sophisticated psychological principles, better known as manipulation. And of course, there was a great focus on presenting and closing and handling objections and everything like that. And the, it, the salesperson was seen as a persuader. It was kind of the era of the bring and brag, show and tell, spray and pray, cram and jam. You know, grab them by the tie, choke them till they buy sort of program, okay? <laughs> I'm a salesperson and you're going down. All right. Well, you know, that kind of ran out of steam after you were a victim to it one or two times and could see it coming, all right? Uh, and by the way, we're paying for our sins today. This is what really gave the fuel to procurement to go after all these systems. Not you personally, of course. Other people. Well, if you tend into, uh, head into era two, about the mid-70s, you had counselor selling come about, consultative selling, value-added selling, strategic selling, uh, a lot of great programs as they began to focus on business-to-business -business sales. And, and during that area, we, it was the era of the needs analysis. We were taught how to ask questions. We were given this needs analysis format. Uh, we learned how to listen instead of just present. We learned how to ask a lot of questions. We built a lot of trust. And we were really seen as the problem solver. Uh, now you look at that and say, well, what's not to like about ERA 2? Well, it's great. But here's the underlying assumption that ERA 2 is based on. And, and to whatever degree this holds true or doesn't hold true in your area of the business, today, uh, we really have to examine it. But the assumption of era two is the customer understood their problem. So if you think about the nature of questions that we ask, the nature of the needs analysis, they were these, what are you experiencing? What kind of problems do you have? What's keeping you awake at night? Uh, what would you like to accomplish? How are you going to measure that? That was the needs analysis. Now the question you have to ask yourself is how capable is this individual you're asking that question to answer it accurately? For example, if I, if I head to our model of the doctor, if I went in for my annual physical this year, and if my doctor conducted the physical the way salespeople operated in era two, it, it would be something like this. I go, uh, uh, doc, I'm here for my annual physical. The doc says, well, Jeff, how are you feeling? Well, actually, I'm feeling uh, pretty good. Well, is there anything that's concerning you? Anything you think I should be uh, looking at or how can I help you this year? Well, Doc, I'm telling you, actually I'm getting to the age uh, that a few of my friends have been experiencing some serious uh, heart problems. Uh, and, and, and one uh, good friend, a runner, uh, actually died from a heart uh, problem. Thank God I don't run. And, 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 and uh, and I'm thinking I should be doing something preventatively relative to uh, heart disease and so forth. And the doctor said, well, that is a very good choice, Jeff, and I can help you with that. Tell me, Jeff, were you thinking about uh, angioplasty or open heart surgery? I don't know. Open heart sounds a little drastic, Doc. Could we go with angioplasty? Certainly, we can go either way. <laughs> See, it's kind of humorous when you picture a doctor doing that for an examination. Uh, but that's a lot of what salespeople are doing today. Essentially, using tools that were very effective based on assumptions that no longer hold true. It's not that the tool is not effective. 
the assumption no longer holds true. Now, if you head, and if you head into era three, you're looking at a situation today where the tool that needs to be given to the salesperson is a tool of business process analysis. You know, we need to be able to look at an ECS system in an aircraft and be able to analyze everything that's going all the way through that system. I mean, does the customer have the ability to analyze that? Is the customer looking at what it costs them to get multiple parts from multiple vendors and have them serviced in multiple locations? Does your customer have a process to really examine the effectiveness of that? Uh, secondly, as far as skills, I need a lot of business knowledge. It's not just about understanding the technology of it, but how does that technology translate up to the customer's business and strategic goals of the business? And so the role of the sales professional today is to be seen as a source of business advantage. In other words, this individual has the capability bringing the Honeywell team to us over at X airline to really position us strategically. And you know, as I listened to the 77 presentation before, I'm wondering how much is it going to cost Boeing and how much is it going to cost the airlines that go with that low cost solution? Does anyone have any idea the financial impact that's going to occur to those people because of that decision that was made. 